Hi, I'm Mike with Geektastic. I'm sitting here with Corey Haynes. Corey does the uh, Global Day of Code Retreats, and he's also very active in, in just speaking and being involved in user groups and technical education. Uh, so, Corey, can you tell us a little bit about what is Global Day of Code Retreat? And what's a Code Retreat? Okay, so Code Retreat's uh, an event. It's a, a community-focused, sort of directed practice um, event that is been going on for almost four years now. Mm -hmm. There's all over the world, and it's a day that's focused on practice okay. rather than learning a new technology. So you just write code? I mean, how, how do you practice? Um, so there's a set uh, format for it. We work on Conway's Game of Life. Okay. We work in 45-minute sessions, and at the end of the 45 minutes, we delete all of the code we did, swap pairs, start again, and we do it about five or six times through the day. Yeah. And then each session, we introduce different constraints different ideas around object-oriented design, mm -hmm. um, test-driven development, pairing, things like that. And so it's a day of sort of pushing yourself past where you normally code. Yeah. And I like to say that it's we, we, we take normal sort of clean code constraints and different design ideas mm -hmm. and we crank them up to 11. Yeah, I, I've been to uh, one or maybe two of your events and things like no return values mm -hmm. or don't use conditional statements is, is always interesting. But for, for the audience, mm -hmm. what what languages are you using? I mean, is this like a Ruby-specific thing? Or? It's it's language agnostic. Okay. So as long, we we ask people to come with a development environment set up, mm -hmm. what we call sort of your language of convenience. Okay. Um, but the community events are very much, if you're interested in uh, trying it in a different language, say yeah. you've never done Clojure, mm -hmm. and somebody there has a closure environment set up, then they can, you can pair with them for 45 right. minutes, so they get a feel for it a little yeah. bit. Um, I, we started off a lot of Java, there's a lot of C Sharp that mm -hmm. shows up, a lot of Ruby that shows up, but they're intended to be language agnostic. Yeah. So what do people do when they can't finish the problem in the 45 minutes allocated? Um, so very few people can, yeah. and in fact, it's intentionally chosen so that you can't finish the problem. Oh, okay. Um, the goal is to sort of retreat from the normal pressures of finishing. Yeah. We all we all know that we write our worst code when we have when we're under rushing constraints, under yeah. constraints and under a time pressure, and the corners we cut, mm -hmm. things like that. So the day is built to allow you sort of that freedom to experiment mm -hmm. and try new things. So. The very first one, it's frustrating for people. And by the end of the day, it's frustrating yeah. not finishing it. <laughs> but you're kind of laughing. Uh, you're laughing yeah. at it. And instead, sort of that pressure to finish goes away. And you start to focus on um, clean code, mm -hmm. focus on investigating different design ideas rather than rushing to finish. Right. And hey, actually, have you ever had anybody like just be like, oh, kind of give more like, you do, put up, 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 up. And just bang it out. So I'm just curious. Yeah, we've had like for the first session. A lot of times, people will sort of hack out a solution because they're still in that mindset of wanting yeah. to get it done. But you know, like a lot of us say, it's easy to get something working when you write crap. Right. And so the idea of the day is to sort of write the best code you've ever written. Right. And see what that looks like, and take what you consider great code, take it to the extreme, and you know, we always talk about going too far, right. but very few people actually get close to too far. Yeah. So, so shoot happens, for gold plating. Shoot, shoot for gold plating. Yeah. And what happens if you actually go too far? What happens if you refactor too much or right. you extract too many methods? What does it look like? And by taking yourself to that place, you get a better sense for when you are actually building a production system, how far you can go. Yeah, and I think that that exercise of like sometimes when you want to start to refactor and you're you're looking and saying okay I'm gonna I'm gonna refactor this code and then you realize you did go too far you spent a, half a day and now you have to back it up but at this code retreat you can say like what if I did this thing I want to try to do mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if you went too far because you don't have to backtrack you just throw it away you throw it away and that gives you a good perspective so that when you are working and you're like. Am I going too far? Yeah. You'll have an experience of actually doing it so that you can be like, well, no, if I go a little farther, it's still okay. okay. Um, and what was probably 
what's probably the most unique um, experience you've had? Like, do you have like a specific? Because we're going to get into the global aspect uh -huh. of it, but the actual at a code retreat, uh, a solution that somebody did. Has anybody done something like implemented it in Vim script or anything like that? Um, we've had people fool around in Bash script. Yeah. Um, I think one team did try it in Vim script, yeah. and um, it's always interesting. Every code retreat, there's always some sort of interesting approach to mm -hmm. it. Uh, so there's nothing really that stands out like that was the coolest. I did see um, at a code retreat in Colorado where um, I think on the final session, some people ended up writing a fairly reasonable solution in yeah. about six or seven lines of Ruby. Wow. And I was like, oh, well, what if you need to do this or change this? And they, it was actually a really nice, small, scripted yeah. solution. We tend, I tend to encourage people to over-engineer, mm -hmm. so make a ton of classes, um, keep very small methods, things like mm -hmm. that, to see what it means we drop that term over engineering all the time, right. but few people know, few people could recognize it yeah. and understand why that's a problem. Now, about the global part, mm -hmm. now, I mean, I know you, you started doing these, these code treats as kind of a one off thing, you did them in a few places, but you do one that spans the entire globe in one day. Yeah, so last year in 2011, in August, I put out a blog post and said, wouldn't it be cool if we had 20 cities yeah. around the world all on the same day and we could Skype and stuff? Yeah. And um, it sort of took off, and by the, I think it was December 5th of 2011, we had 94 cities, 14 time zones, all doing it around the world on the yeah. same day. And you tried to, to hop around. So I, I did Sydney, which yeah. was one of the first ones, and then I caught a 6 p.m. flight that landed in Honolulu mm -hmm. at 6.45 a.m. the same day. So while the sun was going this way, you were going, I hopped the oh, day you went the other way. Oh, and wow. went the other way. And so I'm going to try to do it again this year. Okay. Um, we're aiming for 200 cities this year. Oh, my gosh. Um, we are already at 60, which is about on track. Yeah. And so we've got two months to go. And that's usually when it starts picking up. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's a really great day. There's a lot of, it sort of brings the community, the global community, because code retreats, just as, as one-off things, are done all over the world. Pretty much every weekend now, there's at least one or two going on. Oh, wow. Um, a couple weeks ago, there were six of them on yeah. a day. And um, Global Day is really about bringing, it's a, there's two really cool parts about it. One is bringing that global community together mm -hmm. all around one event. And then um, the other aspect is introducing and training new facilitators. Because mm -hmm. during the day, the facilitator's role is to introduce new constraints, is to answer questions, help people out, ask questions. Um, and so it's on, we do trainings, we do facilitator trainings. Yeah, I was kind um, of about to ask. I mean, and, if somebody wanted to become a facilitator and was like, man, this is really cool. I wish I could do this in my city, mm -hmm. but we're in Anchorage. Mm -hmm. you know, there's nobody around. Uh, you know, how, how, do, how do they go about doing that so, or participating? Oops. Let me, uh, well, the, the, it's built, the format is very well defined. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of built so that even if you are a horrible facilitator, right. if you stick to this format, then it's going to be a great day. Okay. So it's intentionally made for people to be able to just do it mm -hmm. and follow a script almost. And then for as you do more and more, you get more understanding of sort of the subtleties of facilitation, yeah. how to introduce the exercises better, things like that. But if people want to do it, I've had lots of people email me with those exact same questions. Right. Like, I've never done this. I don't. I don't feel like I'm a great developer. All of that. Yeah. But it's like the best way is just to do it. Yeah. Um, the this isn't a great developer exercise. It's this not. is a path. It's a path. And you know, I like to tell everyone that every facilitator that's out there, there's a handful of us who are experienced facilitators and have done a lot. Right. But all of us had our first one. Yeah. And I know very specific people who are. Um, very active in the community, do a lot of these things, and I remember their first code retreat when right. they emailed me and I talked to them. Yeah. And 
you know, had a Skype call with them and walked them through some ideas. Yeah. And now they're doing them all the time. Yeah. And, and it, I mean, it, with it getting so big, I just wonder also, is it getting so, is it getting to become a point where there's a code retreat being set up and you didn't even know about it? And all of a sudden Absolutely. It's like yeah. Absolutely. Like, wow, I, that's cool. I'm very strict about the format. Mm-hmm. And so we have it published. This is the format. Um, I've been sort of iron hand holding the yeah. format that if you want to do a code retreat, this is the format. Yeah, if you, you do. want to call it a code retreat. If you want to call it a code retreat. I always make sure to tell people that the it's not intended to be the only activity that anyone ever does and mm-hmm. it's not the it doesn't cover all aspects of development. It has very focused things that it works on and it's there's lots of really important practice oriented mm-hmm. activities people can do. But code retreat is this. Right. And so I've been um, fairly iron handed about that. Okay. Um, and but now it's I've I've sort of as I've sort of curated it and, and done gone, it's it, it's intended to be decentralized. Okay. So people set them up and do them yeah. all the time. Very few people now like email me and go, Can I? Right. Because it's not about my approval or my um, influence or anything like that. It's a local event to bring people together. And so it's practice. kind of finally grown beyond your yeah. your purpose. Yeah, so that's, that has to be a really cool feeling. It's a wonderful feeling. Early on, I knew sort of yeah. what everything was doing, and you know, I I pissed a couple people off because they're like, "Oh, I'm going to do this." And I'm like, "Well, that's not a code retreat." Right. I'd ask you to not call it a code retreat. Yeah. But um, now it's gotten, it's, it's sort of reached that level where it's beyond me right. and it's not centered around me. I'm sort of a, uh, one, of my, one of the guys called me a benevol- benevolent dictator. Yeah. Well, I think more instigator. Um, yeah. Is- <laughs> and I like to curate, yeah. like I run the coderetreat.org site, mm-hmm. but it's not like I'm on there saying what can happen. Right. Um, and there's enough people now who are experienced facilitators, experienced hosts, who just, they're off doing it. And, and it, um, there's not really experimentation around the format, mm-hmm. but there's more and more experimentation around exercises during the 45 minutes. Right. So um, I was going to, uh, would that be relevant? Because I was, what I was just thinking about is, well, if it's object-oriented, functional programming is very much becoming uh, uh, popular now. Yeah. Could somebody do a functional code retreat? Wouldn't that still be a code retreat? Or, absolutely, know? absolutely. The, the format is the 45 minutes, the throwing the code away, Conway's game of life. My, I'm an OO guy, yeah. and I've been doing a lot of uh, sort of thinking about OO concepts over mm-hmm. the last couple of years. And so the code retreats that I facilitate and the exercises that I do focus on um, sort of the edges of understanding around mm-hmm. OO design. Okay. I don't have a tremendous amount of like expertise in mm-hmm. functional paradigms. Um, I did, I've done, you know, a fair share of functional. But if somebody had like but, a theme that they wanted to build a code retreat around, and they they could make a cohesive set of exercises to do within a format, they could. Absolutely. So a, a perfect example of that is uh, J.B. Rainsberger mm-hmm. um, started a thing called Legacy Code Retreat. Oh, okay. And um, it was the first sort of expanding the family of Code Retreat. And so they don't do Counter's Game of Life. They have a code base that Chet Hendrickson and Patrick Welsh mm-hmm. um, uh, put together, which okay. is a horrible code base. <laughs> and so the, the It takes real talent to build real world. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's Chet. Um, and so the exercises are about writing tests around it, refactoring, mm-hmm. and it's still a, it's a legacy code retreat. So right. the classic code retreat, I'm very, um, you know, here's the format. There's no reason you can't come up with something like a uh, um, it's Matt Hauser came up with um, a test automation code retreat. Okay. So they have been experimenting with uh, doing the code retreat format, but around different techniques in 
um, test automation. Okay. So they use a code base and work on different yeah. automation tools. So how can we hit this this way? How can yep. we hit it that way? Yeah. And so okay. what I what I'm aiming for and what I love to see is an expansion of the code retreat family okay. rather than a. Um, if you go to something called code retreat, you don't know what you're going to get because people right. are doing whatever they want. But if you go to a legacy code retreat, you know you're going to. You know you get this. If you go to a test automation code retreat, Brian Merrick for a little while was. Um, talking about putting together some exercises on a refactoring code retreat. Mm -hmm. And so I love this. How can you mutate a code base? Yeah. And so, um, but I tell people, I get people asking like, can I use a different problem, all of this? And I generally say no. Well, yeah. I always say no. But what I want people to do is use, you know, it's been, we've been building and, and sort of fine-tuning the format for almost four years now. Mm -hmm. It's settled. It's good. Yeah. Early we know on, this works. This worked. We, early on, we did a lot of um, experimenting around the format mm -hmm. and settled on something that works. Okay. And so what I want, what I would love people to do mm -hmm. is come up with a different set of exercises centered around something specific Mm -hmm. And then call that a X code retreat. Love to see somebody who has more experience with functional languages and knows about functional design mm -hmm. come up with a set of exercises that are really applicable to functional programming yeah. and have a sort of a functional code retreat. So, for example, one of the exercises that I love doing that always causes people problems is no return values. Yeah. My favorite. Um, and in a functional language, say you're doing it in Clojure, mm -hmm. well, Clojure's got a lot of just data transforms. Right. And what comes out is it's transformed into some other mm -hmm. format. And so the core, a lot of the core is built on data coming in, data going data out. out. Yeah. So asking them to say no return values, yeah. I don't know. Like, I'm not a Clojure guy. Mm -hmm. um, I've fooled around a little bit paired with people, but... I don't know if that would give them a valuable thing to practice. Right. I know. But at least it would make them try to think about yeah. something. That, like if they're always saying, it goes this way, it goes this way, it goes this way. What if it goes like this? What if it you goes know? like that? I know that in OO, mm -hmm. the exercise around no functional or no return values is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it's a really valuable design style that you can use and get better at mm -hmm. and in certain cases it's a much it's a highly it's a much more superior uh, form in certain cases. certain cases and so one of the ideas is that we tend to have the way we code right um, it's sort of like our style the the wagon trail where you code this way for so long you end up with ruts that your wheels go down and, and it's effective and you get to California and right. you find your gold but what if, if that's your only tool that you can pull out, then, you know... What if a problem... You know, what sad. happens when, you know, the wagon wheel falls off? Yeah, you know, yeah. And so, Oregon Trail. <laughs> really, yeah, or what, if, what happens if you get dysentery? Right, exactly, yeah. What, what know, if Bobby That's a problem, dies? yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's really the goal of it. And Global Day is about um, increasing the number of people who are comfortable facilitating, mm -hmm. expanding it. After last year, last year the majority of the people running them were new. Right. New facilitators, new hosts. And that led to an explosion this year mm -hmm. of people who had a little bit of experience doing it. So that's where we got every weekend. You Somebody can go to the something. event, you can go to the Code Retreat Org site. And, uh, and so it's, it's Code, uh, that's what I was going to wrap up is say, mm -hmm. for people who are interested in participating or running a Code Retreat, mm -hmm. You have a website. Um, CodeRetreat.org is our, code retreat our org. social network. Okay. It's built on Ning. Um, and there's a big banner right now you can mm -hmm. go. There's a page for Global Day. It's at globalday.coderetreat.org. Okay. But if you go to CodeRetreat.org, there's a banner you All can get to. All the stuff to. is there. Um, there's an events listing. Okay. So it has both the uh, registered locations for Global Day as well mm -hmm. as what's going on this weekend in and it could be near your town. Okay, great. Well, thank um, so you very much. Thanks so much for uh, talking, and keep up the good work. These Appreciate are great it. interviews. Thanks.